Christ. So, like for example, in Luke chapter 3, verses 23 to 32, there were many times that the word son was mentioned. Then, uh, then in Matthew, the proverb... Uh, what is the context of that? Son of, son of, that is in the genealogy of Jesus. That's right. But that's not only in uh, Luke. It's also in Matthew chapter 1. And again, we... Uh, it's one of us search, so another has uh, uh, found repetitions of words, uh, like the word master in the parable of the Tanes, that is in the, uh, Matthew 25, verse uh, 14 to 30. Then the words happy many times mentioned in, the, in uh, Luke chapter 6, 22, verses 22 to 23. Beatitudes. Then the word love. On the way of love, First Corinthians chapter thirteen, verses one to thirteen. Then the words Christ has risen in First Corinthians fifteen, uh, chapter fifteen, uh, verses twelve to nineteen. And then the word body in First Corinthians chapter twelve, verses twelve to six. For many times there are the mention of body there. So, you were not able to agree on what you need to do, no. But then, I, we, we just pick up this one. We have to pick up this one. First Corinthians 12, verse 2, 12 to 26, one body, many parts. Uh, the, uh, and then I tried to look into the commentary of the New Testament in this one. So there was the, the first question is, why did, uh, what is the situation of Corinth at that time? Why is it that Paul uh, chose body um, as a symbol of the church? Uh, the imagery, the imagery the of the church. Okay. And, uh, and uh, as we can see there in the commentary, that the, body, the image of the body, uh, because during that time, I don't know if I'm uh, very correct, uh, maybe. <laughs> is that the people you know, or the believers in Corinth, uh, they are not united. Uh, they don't, um, and then uh, there is a, a, a poor respect for the body, especially Corinth is a place where women are prostituted. Yeah. So people uh, wanted to really give also dignity to the human body. And uh, we wanted to show to us, to the people of, to, to the believer of Corinth, that uh, your body is holy uh, because you are one baptism, uh, you are connected with Christ, therefore your body is holy. And uh, since you are, uh, and then he showed that uh, uh, the body has many parts, yet each body has its own functions and uh, is contributing uh, to the body. The, the body is alive because each part is contributing its own function to the body. This is where the body is alive. So if uh, uh, if the believers in Corinth would not uh, give their part or contribute to the life of the community, then that the church will be uh, living a uh, dying or a dead community. So people wanted to teach the, uh, the people in Corinth that to be believers is to be a part of Christ. And if you are part of the body of Christ, therefore you should also be holy, be respectful to one another, and give, <laughs> and we also share to make your community a living community. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Paano kaya ang pag, ano, pagbigay natin yan sa mga bata kasi yung later part mo parang moralistic ang dating. Parang uh, homily, parang lording over, yung gano'n ano. Eh ayaw na ayaw na mga teenagers yan. Yung sasabihin mo, dapat tayo ganito, dapat kaya nga, dapat tayo yung ganyan. Paano kaya natin sila mailahok sa, uh, ano, sa usapin ganyan para maging personal? Pero paano mapasok ang kanilang kalooban doon sa kwento? Okay. 
So although your your explanation is correct, no, um, we are trying to look for getting out of the box. We're trying to look for creative ways, as um, uh, our Pope is saying. We're trying to look for uh, how do you call that now? A paradigm shift. Paano gagawin yan? So that is with you. Uh, example. Open your Bibles to look. Uh, Mark 10. Mark 10 on the party on the on Bartimaeus. Mark 46, chapter 46, chapter 10. Verses 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, Yung tinawag ay hindi yung malamig. Call. Call. Verse 49. Verse 49. And they called him. And they told him he is calling you. Because Bartimaeus keeps on shouting. No? And Jesus said, call him. And they called him. And they told him he is calling you. 48, 49. All right. So if there is a repetition of three times, what will we surmise here? What is the text telling us as an additional message aside from the curing of Bartimaeus? Ano kaya ang um, ano kaya ang bakit kaya gusto ng author na tawagin ang ating pansin sa word na yan? Call him. He's calling you, and they called him. Ano ang pwedeng maging isang mensahe? They called him to Jesus. Oh, then Jesus cured him. After that, what is the last verse? He followed him. He followed him along the way. So after getting cured, he followed him along the way. So one of the interpretations of that particular uh, miracle story is a story on Paul being called and being uh, we call that, uh, one of the best ways. Uh, sa akin, no? One of the best ways of saying thank you for the goodness of the Lord received is to follow Him. Kaya para sa akin, one of the ways by which we could show um, thanksgiving to the Lord is to pass on the charity that we have received. No? Pag nag-aral ka kung saan sa lupalop dito sa mundo, kailangan naman yung pinag-aral mo, uh, no, i-share mo naman sa iba, hindi yung ikaw lang ang na-out-of-all-it-love. Uh, 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 so, uh, yung pagpunta ninyo dito, okay, relating it to the situation now, yung pagpunta ninyo dito at pagpunta ko rin dito, I'm supposed to be in the office for 10 days, wala ko doon sa office for 10 days. But I said, this is my service to the church, service to, kasi you come from different parts of the of the Philippines. So, pagbalik ninyo, you have a responsibility. No? So, pass on whatever you have learned. In the simplest manner you can. Kasi ang ating mga tao, mga simpleng tao, no? Yes. So, huwag tayong gagamit ng mga uh, terminolohiya na hindi nila maintindihan. Kung pwede nga, ang pagbisaya, bisaya. Ganyan, para ano, uh, makapasok sa kaibuturan ng kanilang uh, puso. Kasi what we, what we are trying to do actually here in Paradigm Chief is to usher people to Jesus, not usher people to us. So we are trying to allow them to have an encounter with Jesus. So for them to have the opportunity to meet Jesus, to feel Him, to taste Him, to experience Him through events, through people, through uh, experiences. So nabanggit yung ano, data kahapon. You know, you can meet Christ through many things. It can be through events. It can be through prayer. It can be through another person. And things like that. Like, I will give you an example. Um, during the IEC, sabi nila, 
Uh, lati pupunta ka ba? Sabi ko, ayoko. Bakit ako pupunta doon? 15,000 people lang ano, pupunta doon. And then the executive secretary of the ano, uh, CBCP said, all executive secretaries have to go. Bakit naman ako pupunta doon? Because you have to explain to the new chairman kung ano ang ECBA. Hindi ko naman i-explain dito. Hindi pwede punta ka sa Cebu. Ang back office. Ah. <laughs> Ang dami kong ano, dahilan. Pero oh, sige na lang punta ko. So, tinext ko si Star. Sabi ni Star, oh, may seminar before that. Oh, sige, mag-attend ako. Pakasayang naman yung pera kong pagpunta dyan. Tapos, oh, sige, nag-attend ako ng seminar. Pagkatapos, sinapoint ako na reader. Reader ng general intercession si Ilocano. Eh, hindi naman ako Ilocano. Ako, bilaktis ko, bilaktis mo. Nang ganyan. So, ah, slowly ang pag-aro. Pagbasa ko. Parang ang gandang sa pinandamit ko kasi international nga eh. So, so pumunta ko doon. Pagkatapos kong nagbasa, ah, I was very satisfied. Uh, baba na ako ng ano. Na ako, pagbaba ko doon sa entablado, na alis yung pakong ng ano. <laughs> eh, lahat ng tao na araw nakatingin sa akin na, ay, ay, mama. Oo nga, oo nga. Pero paano ako lalakad dito? <laughs> ah, Pile-pile ako. So, kunwari, meron ako ng ano, tinawag ng mga madre. Ay, hindi ka naman. Kasi ano, pipilay-pilay ako. Lord, St. Jude, please come to my aid. Lord, where is your face? Ganyan-ganyan na naman ako. No? Kasi unang-una talaga tatawagin ko, Lord, where is your face? Then, nag-ano ka. Tapos may kumabay. Ma'am, sabi niya, dito ka pala. Yes, andito ako. Tapos luwagin siya, sabi ko, sorry ha. I-shortcut natin yung ating ano, usapan. Bakit ma'am? Eh kasi, yung pinay ako eh. Kasi wala, walang takok yung aking ano. Yung mga ganun sa kanos, nahulog dyan ho. Huwag ka nang tumihin kasi tingin nyo na. Sabi niya, ma'am, ano ang size mo? Sabi ko, 7. Ha? Meron ako sa patos, ma'am, 7. Uh, size 7. Ha? Sino kaya ang pumupunta sa seminar, international seminar, na dala-dala sa patos, bagong bago? No, ma'am, ito na. O, oh, di na sa patos na ako. Hindi na kami pupunta sa uh, sa SM. Eh, sabi ko, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. Ganyan. Tapos yung dalawang madre, tiga two things sila, eh, bagyo, sabi nila, ma'am, gusto namin makatikim ng ano, Japanese food. O, sige, tayo na sa ano. Tapos nang pagpunta namin, sabi nila, ma'am, ang mahal-mahal naman, mawawa ka naman. Sabi ko, okay lang, kasi five, once in five years naman yan eh. Pero sa loob-loob ko, naku, oo nga, oh, uh, five na lang ang gagamitin ko. <laughs> Ganyan. Tapos, meron sigurong nakakita sa akin, may foreigner na, ano, pupunta, nilapitan ako. Ano, nagbagsak siya ng 1,000 pesos. Sabi ko, sir, sir, sir. Sabi ko, kaya, no, it's all right. Sir, what is your name? No, no, it's alright. Enjoy your food, sabi niya. Grabe, sabi ko. Kasi sir, kahit anong piliin ninyo dyan, kasi may wala ko sa akin. Tapos nag-charge ako ng aking, ano, nag-charge ako ng aking cellphone. Nakalagay nga doon, 50 pesos per hour eh. Pagkatapos, nung bukunin ko na yung cellphone, kung magbayad ako, Ma'am, hindi po, libre po para sa'yo. Ha? Bakit? Bakit? Sunod, sunod na lang ang ano. Yes, ang sarasabi. I love you. So, I had to go to the chapel that evening and say, ito na ba? Ito na ba yung, uh, yung ano? Uh, Jesus shows His face to you. Kahit na ikaw ay umaayaw, lumalapit pa rin siya sa iyo. Parang maiyak-iyak ako kasi kahit yung aking, ano, yung aking uh, titirahan, napakalayo doon sa, uh, sa bundok. Pero may dalawang madre from uh, Brazil na hindi dumating. Kaya yung kanilang ano, yung place. kanilang oh, oh, uh, uh, place, yung family na mag-cater sa kanila. Ako na lang kinuha ng mga bayo na po sa mag-uunga na lang. Magkatabi yun doon sa tabi ng ano. Ayos. Kaya nagre-reserve ako pero nakukonsensya ako mag-reserve kasi maraming maaga doon. Tapos naka-reserve yung isang gilera ng ano, nahiya naman ako. <laughs> so hindi na lang ako nagre-reserve. Pero... That is uh, an example, I think, uh, in my case. I don't know for you. You have to identify who are the people used by Jesus, by God, to make His presence present sa iyo kahit na ikaw ay complain ng complain. Ako kasi ma mareklamo. <laughs> so, but He always shows His face, His charity, His compassion in many, many ways. No? I, uh, through events, sabi ko nga. Kaya, I agree with Father. Huwag ninyong sayangin ang inyong mga karanasan. Kasi ang karanasan, nagsasalita din sa atin. Nang encounter nga, encounter with Jesus. Mga diba na lang sa ano, NBA. <laughs> yan, so, gano'n yun. So, thank you very much for your sharing. So, that's also a good start. We can dig more and try to find out more. Like the example that I gave you, si, ano, uh, si Bartimaeus. And Bartimaeus can be used also for the name. 
Doon sa Mark 8, meron din tayong ano, blind man. But he is identified as the blind man of Bethsaida. Pero Mark din yun, ha? Mark 8. Pero bakit magdating sa Mark 10, may pangalan na? Blind man Bartimaeus. Bakit ganun? Ang sabi ko, Father, bakit ganun? That is why you find out. Kasi hindi lagay ko na lang yung pangalan ko doon sa blind man of Bethsaida. Ako yun. <laughs> At ang ano ko na lang interpretation ko doon, walang pangalan doon because you can put your own name there. Blind man of Bethsaida. I can be the blind man of Bethsaida. So, uh, blind man of or whatever country you come from or barrio or village you come from. So, so anyway, so next group. Iba yung nagpapataas ng kanyang kamay. Anong number po kayo pa? Anong number? Number 8. Ah, yung ano? Echoes of other passages. Echoes of other passages and cross-references. Our Old Testament text is taken from Exodus 1, verse 16 and 22. When you act as midwives for the Hebrew women, look on the birth stool. If it is a boy, kill him. If it is a girl, she may live. And then verse 22. Yeah. Pharaoh then commanded all his people, throw into the Nile every boy that is born, but you may let all the girls live. So if you were born during the Jewish time, girls, you are spared. And that's the Old Testament. Now we're going to the New Testament taken from chapter 2 of Matthew verse 16. The massacre of the infants. Mary, when Herod realized that he had been deceived by the Magi, he became furious. He ordered the massacre of all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity, two years old and under, in accordance with the time he had ascertained from the Magi. So, first, the first question that was asked is, why boys? Why why were the boys massacred during the time of of Moses he Pero if we if we recall during the Old Testament the primary theological theme is patriarchal okay? and father Sam commented that for the Jewish for the Jewish people and the Jewish culture Having a boy in your family means perpetuity of lineage, of descendants. That's why looking at the context or looking at the context of the Jewish people during the Egyptian slavery, Pharaoh was uh, afraid of the Israelites dominating the Egyptians. And connecting to that is a an Egyptian legend, if I don't know if some of you knows, know this, there's a legend in Egyptian mytho mythodolo mythology, mythology that, that whenever it is a time of drought, the Pharaoh, may I use the word, sorry for the word, the Pharaoh has to masturbate in front of all the people, and when the sperm comes out and it touches the ground, ground Everybody heals, shows that the man being the source of life has fertile the land and now they, they will begin uh, tilling the soil. That's where, they, that's where they got the idea that they should kill every Israelite boy to stop the lineage or the, the continuity of the descendants of Israelites. Now connecting it to our gospel, uh, Herod massacred the infants during the during the time that he was informed that the king of the Jews is born. This in this in this text the connection of 
of the gospel to the Old Testament is taken from the similarities and differences of Herod and Perot. Uh, what that's one of that's one of our questions. What is what are the possible similarities and differences between Pero and Hero? Again, Father Sam, in his deep contemplation, wow. uh, he said, he said, Pharaoh, the Pharaoh was thinking of quantity. He had, the Pharaoh has to kill all the descendants of Israelites. He has to kill all the descendants of Israelites so that they will not be dominated. While on the side of Herod, he has to kill uh, his, uh, oh, no. uh, Pharaoh was on the quantity, Herod was on the quality. Why? Quality. Because one boy is born to take his place being the king of the Jews. If you remember, Herod was considered the king of the Jews because he is the one controlling whole, the whole uh, Israel, Israel nation. So, when Herod knew that someone is born, it is not about, he is not thinking about, even if he kills all the children, he is not thinking if he can kill the boy. He is only thinking of the position. While on the payroll, he is thinking of, if we, if we put it, the common good of the Egyptians. The payroll was thinking of the common good of the Egyptians, while Herod was thinking of his personal interest. That's their difference. Their similarity is they are, they are driven by uh, great power, envy, and light, and the light. Fear, fear. Uh, kasi yung papel ko doon. Anyway, that's the, that's how we connected the, actually we look first for the Matean text, and then we try to locate it from the Old Testament, and we found out found that in the account of the massacre of the Hebrew boy. Thank you. Thank you very much. May I, may I add one? Yeah. <laughs> yes. 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 Uh, if may I comment on the repetition, ma'am? I was thinking you may have taken the the threefold question of Jesus. I think that's a more, more vivid illustration of repetition. Uh, do you love Peter? Do you love me? And then Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? If you do the excavation, you will find out that in the original Greek text, the three, the three, do you love me? Uh, it was start, it, it started with Piliosme, Piliosme, and then on the third question is Agapesme. When the, when the Greek Agapesme was used, that's the time that uh, Peter's heart was touched that way. He said, Lord, you know me. You know that I love you. That's the part that uh, the question already touches the heart of Peter. And it, and it, and it, it, and it, and it, Sayang, sayang yung ano words. Uh, and it will, and it will, ano, parang pagkakaanin niya yung three times din na dininay ni Peter si Jesus Christ. I do, not, I do not know that man, I do not know that man, I do not know that man. And when Jesus asked, do you love me? Yes, Lord, I love you. Yes, Lord, I love you. Parang binawi nung, nung question ni Jesus kay Peter yung pagdinay niya earlier in the account. Thank you. Amen. All right, so that is additional uh, information. Thank you very much. But we were saying about uh, one example. That's another example also, of course. And um, this brings us to the reflection that uh, following your way of, your uh, no, trend of thought in relation to that, uh, I love you, I love you, I love you, Lord. Uh, the deeper is the relationship, no? Uh, the deeper is the encounter. Kaya kailangan, kung gusto mo mayroon ng encounter, kailangan constant yung communication. And by communication here, I speak about uh, prayer. No? Prayer, contemplation, silence. No? Uh, which is very, very uh, important in our lives. 
for a deeper relationship with Jesus. Sabi ko nga yung pamangkin ko, sabi niya, nung bumitaw ako, auntie, sabi niya, sa prayer life, nung tinigil ko nang magbasa ng Biblia, dyan ako nakulog. And it is true also for some of my friends who got out of the priesthood. Sa kanilang, ano, sa kanilang sharing sa akin, sabi niya, hindi kasi malakas ang aking prayer life. Hindi, hindi constant ang aking prayer life, kaya gano'n. Wala nang ano eh, walang kakapitan. And then, when this uh, thing about, sabi nga ni Father kahapon eh, basang-basa ng papel namin, eh kasi nga marami nang nangyayari dito. Nabasa ko yung isang sinabi ng isang obispo, sabi niya, under human conditions, human circumstances, it is impossible for a man to remain celibate. Impossible yung word na ginamit niya. So, nag-ano, nag-isip ako doon. Kasi binasa ko yung succeeding line, sabi niya eh. But with the grace of the Holy Spirit, is it is only with the grace of God, it is only with the grace of the Holy Spirit that what we consider impossible becomes possible. And that is why, nag-ano ako, nag-member ako doon sa uh, Facebook account ni Jennifer. Jennifer Filoteo was one of my students here sa, ano, sa Lasal. Meron siya, ano, let us pray for our priest. So, may prayer warriors tayo para sa ating mga kaparian. Kasi nga, uh, considering the fact na yun nga, yung sinabi niya, sinabi nila, mahirap daw talaga. Mahirap. It is easier for ladies. It's easier for, for women. But for men, parang ano talaga, struggle talaga yan. So, kung wala, kung hindi sila kumakapit, kung hindi natin sila tulungan nakakapit sa Panginoon, and to have something to to, to hold on to, ay talagang ano, babansa. Kasi, ang kanilang anong case is attachment, detachment. It is an attached detachment and it is a detached attachment. No? So ladies, kailangan ano yan natin, alam natin yan na uh, sabi nga ni Father, sino may sabi, ah si Monsi, sabi niya, uh, kailangan merong mga boundaries. Diba? Mga boundaries, kahit na sinasabi natin open to, open to all, yung sinabi ni ano ni pa, paring word ka hapon kahit na uh, things are changing kailangan we have to recognize the fact that we have to protect our priests and we have to protect the church and we have to protect ourselves so kailangan din natin yan yung mga boundaries natin so yan yeah. it is important sabi ni Bishop Pabilio to actualize it and say to the Lord I love you Lord ako ang hirap hirap kong Ano, sabi nila, I love you Lord kasi sa amin, sa mga magkakapatid, may mga mores-mores kami sa ano eh, sa aming kultura, hindi pwede magkatabi kayo brother and sister, hindi pwede mag-discuss kayo about sex. Kaya nagtatago kami ng kapatid kung next sa akin kasi kumukha siya ng medicine noon. So sabi ko, ano, ano yung ganito? Ha, alam mo ba yung ganyan? So siya yung nag explain sa akin kasi college na ako, hindi ko pa alam ang ano, uh, yung mga sexual intercourse na yan, malay ko ba kung ano yan. Uh, Pinag-uusapan, nasuspend nga ako sa, ano, yung, sa high school nung ano, nagbasa ako ng about elopement. Eh, ano ba yung elopement na yan? Tapos ano, nakita ng pari yung libro. Ano, uh, sinuspend ako. Kasi bakit ka meron akong libro about elopement? Eh di lalo akong naging curious, ano ba kasi yan? No? At hindi, tinatanong ko sa ano sa kapatid ko, hindi maganda yung background ko in terms of that, kaya may mga uh, oo, so kaya may mga ano ako, uh, I had a lot of catching up to do in terms of uh, you know, feeling comfortable. Kaya when I was in Nemi, mga pari ang mga classmate namin, tatlo lang kami babae. Sabi ng isang pari, may I talk to you? May I, may I travel with you? Sabi ko, I'm going to town. Sabi niya, may I travel with you? I said, why? Because I want to talk to you. Ano sasabihin dito? Tapos sabi niya, parang natakot ako, no? pero sabi niya, because I see that you're the only woman here in this group who is very comfortable with all the priests. Yeah, I have seven brothers, sabi ko, baby. And uh, why should I not be comfortable with the priest? Ayun, doon na siya nagsabi ng kanyang mga struggles as a priest. So doon ko rin nakikita yung, ah, pa paano ba makatulong ang kababaihan sa mga pari? Paano ba makatulong ang ating psyche? Yung, kasi yung way of thinking nila, iba sa way of thinking ng kababaihan. Yung interpretation nila sa mga sitwasyon, iba sa interpretation ng ano, kababaihan. Kaya, kailangan, ano, ma... Tawag dito. 
kailangan we have to contend with that also. Okay, so our our discussion is not about sexuality, so it is just a topic. Even if it is a very, you know, if it, even if it is a very delicious topic. So uh, can we can we assure our priests who are present here and our brothers that we will flood them with our prayers to yes. support them, yes. yes. support them yes. with prayers, with our prayers. We will pray for the priests. Loving perseverance. Yes. Okay. Next. We need our prayer. Next. Bakit wala na? 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 Oh, Erika. Yung group mo nyo, sino ang representative ng group ng Erika? Bobo daw, Father. Father, sige na. Si Father, laying law yan eh. O yan. Ano yung sign nyo? Ano yung sign nyo, Father? Sa amin po ay sa numbers po. Ah, numbers. Ayan. Number two. Number two. Cheers ka. Sa amin po yung group. Ay, group ano nga tayo? Group. Group two. Hindi po kami magkaisa. Okay lang. Opo. Tinignan po namin yung tanong na why what might be the significance of having 12 identical offerings? Kasi yung verse, yung chapter po ay napakahaba. Chapter uh, chapter 7 verses 10 to 83. Mm -hmm. What is about numbers? So, uh, actually, yung po ay about uh, 12 offerings ng 12 tribes of Israel na represented po ng bawat anak ng mga, ng mga lolo lolo nila. Tapos, Significant din po kasi 12 din po yung kinds ng offerings. Ano po, pare-pareho po yung offerings na naan doon. And then, tinignan po namin sa, sa mas, mas luma pang uh, reference yung, yung 12, yung number 12. At nakita po namin yun sa, sa Genesis, ano po, yung 12 tribes of uh, Israel na anak ni Jacob. Ano po. Tapos nagpunta po kami ngayon sa New Testament, ano po? At nakita po namin ang 12 disciples. Ano po? Ang isa doon ay Judas. <laughs> Parang yung 12 priests na naandito. Tapos po ay tinignan din po namin ang Book of Revelation. Ang tali wala pong makikitang number 12 na na specific number ano sa revelation pero meron po silang uh, mahalaga din uh, uh, part na ang sabi po meron doong 12 uh, 24 ano nga atin 24 elders na nagre-represent po ng 12 uh, tribes tapos meron din pong sinasabing number na 144,000 na sealed sealed ano po uh, pag binasa po ninyo yung text uh, 12,000 po ang masisave per tribe. Ano ho? Pero pag binasa po ninyo yung commentary, ang sinasabi naman po ng commentary, actually, it refers to all. Ano po? Sa lahat talaga. Every tongue, every race. Ano ho? So, sa lahat, nation, lahat nation, etc. Ano po? So, ano po yung significance ng 12? <laughs> Uh, actually, kung babalikan po natin yung Book of Numbers, ang sabi po ay repetition of offerings. Ang isa po namin naging reflection doon ay ginamit po kasi namin yung data analysis and then reflection. Ano? Ang, reflection <laughs> ang reflection po namin ay uh, hindi po nagsasawa ang Diyos sa kahit isang uri ng offering na paulit-ulit na ginagawa. Ano? Parang uh, kahit ulit-ulitin mo, uh, hindi ang Diyos nagsasawa, hindi ang Diyos na bibini. Tapos po ay uh, sa labing dalo, sa New Testament naman po kami naging reflection ay sa labing dalawa niya ay pinagkatiwala ang simbahan sa pangungulo ni San Pedro. Kaya nga po meron tayong 12 articles of faith ano, na siyang pinangahawakan ng simbahan. Uh, ano pa nga ate? <laughs> Ah, ang isa pa rin pag lumabas sa reflection, ano daw po yung 
Sorry, nagtanong po ulit, nag-post po ulit ng another question. May kaugnayan kaya ito sa 12 months ng isang taon? At meron kaya itong kinalaman sa 12 hours ano ho, ng gabi at ng araw? Ano po? Ang reflection po ay uh, meron. Sapagkat uh, sabi nga po natin kanina, kahit pa ulit-ulit ang tao, sabi nga po doon sa isang, sa isang gospel sa, sa Bible, ano ho, kahit kumatok yung kaibigan, humihingi ng uh, pinapay, ano, namungulit na. Yung hong byuda na namungulit na sa, sa judge, ano ho, yun hong babaeng sabi ng mga alagati, namungulit pa sunod-sunod kay Jesus na humawak sa kanyang laylayan. At marami pang namungulit sa Panginoong Jesus. Ang lahat po ay pinagbigyan. Amen. Well, uh, that is the miracle of yan, archaeology. Yes. Trying to dig more and more and more. And then you come with more and more uh, insights. So very useful din, is, um, even without uh, using the parts of the Lectio Divina, very useful din yung pinigyan ni Father kahapon, di ba? There. Oh. Data, analysis, reflection, ano yung e? Engagement. Engagement, which uh, uh, goes action. with what we call action. Okay, congratulations. Yeah. Alright, sino pa meron pang hindi pa nag-present? Kayo pa rin, hindi pa kayo Number six. Ano, sila. Sila mo na. 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 Anong sign niyo po? Names. 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 So, meron po dito ang nakita namin. Lahat nag-contribute po. Kanya-kanya kami nang binuksan po. May tumingin, hindi lang nag-focus doon sa four gospels, rather nagtingin din po sa ibang uh, books within the New Testament din. Para ma makita namin ano ba talaga yung pagkakaiba po. Ay, pagkakapagayo po. Una, meron po kami dito yung kay Matthew 1, 23. Ito ay patungkol kay Jesus na tinawag na Emmanuel. Na ibig sabihin, ang Diyos ay nasa akin. Tapos po, yung kay Matthew 16, 18, eto yung kay Simon na kinawag na Peter, na you are the rock. Tapos po, doon kay Mark 13, 61, si Jesus, the son of man. So, ninumber number lang po na lang po para dire-direction lang po tayo. Sa Luke 1, ah uh, yung pong ano ba yung ipapangalan kay, kay, Sinja, ay, kay John, na John the Baptist. Tapos sa Luke 1.32 naman, si, si Jesus ulit na tinawag, Son of the Most High. Tapos meron kami dito sa John 21.24, si Thomas na tinawag din Didymus. Tapos si, sa John 1.42, si Simon ulit na tinawag bilang Mariona. Son of Jonah. Makikita po yun doon sa komentary doon sa sign ng Bible natin sa 1.42 dito po sa John 1. Tapos po, ano pa ba? So, dito po sa reflection ko lang, o ano reflection natin, na lahat pala ng pangalan natin, nung maging kayo po, ay merong meaning yung yung pangalan at meron tayong mission. Sa akin, ang aking baptismal name po ay Joel. Si Joel po ay isang prophet noon sa Biblia. So, nung kinuha ko yung aking baptismal certificate, naging Joel. Kung titignan natin sa dictionary, ang Joey ay isang baby kangaroo. So, yung kinunod ko ngayon siya, so, ano ba yung mission ko ngayon? Habang kasama ninyo at nag-train bilang isang leader ng aming parokya o ng aming diocese ng iba. Tapos, ano ba yung mission ko? Maging isang katekista. Ano ba ang ginagawa ng isang propeta? Hindi po ba nangangaral? So, ang sa akin, bilang isang Joey, nagkaging Joey, yung isang tanggaro, gagamitin ko yung image niya para tatalon ako through one place to another to preach. Yun po. Wow, mission.
ninyo, napansin ninyo sa kanya ano, sa kanyang analysis. Ginaw, ginamit niya yung dare. Dita. Ayan. Pagkatapos analysis, nag-analyze sila. Pagkatapos sa reflection, ang reflection ko po ay ganito. Ay reflection na rin pala ay ganito. Ganyan. And then the engagement. engagement, anong gagawin daw niya? Ay, katulad ng kangaroo. <laughs> Ganyan din ang anong ginagawa natin sa proseso ng ating lecture, Divina, which I will present later. Alright, thank you. Ang galing-galing nyo, ha? Father Ernie! Okay, next! Father Ernie! Father Ernie! Power ka na yun. Hindi naman ang power vision, overpower yun. Actually, kanina po, hindi kami, hindi namin malaman kung paano namin sisimulan. Pero we were able to look into some resources from the internet. At ang sabi, simple lang naman daw, discernible daw yung verse. Ang aming verse ay numbers, 624 to 26, which is the the three, the priestly blessing. Ngayon, opo, based on structure, kung mapapansin po natin, tatlong beses yung blessing na na sinasabi yan. Kaya po basa ni ko mo. Sige, ito yung talaga. Para makita po natin yung kasi structure ito. Sorry po, puta ko dito ng walang dalas. Numbers. Savior ka naman eh. Salamat, Father. The Lord bless you and keep you. Actually, kinakanta natin ito. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord let His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you kindly and give you peace. So, structure, parang kung makikita po natin, the Lord bless you and keep you. That the Lord let His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you kindly and give you peace. So it's uh, it is repeated three times. Pero just to further emphasize yung blessing na yon, laging merong karuntong na end. No? So parang two, 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 ganun siya. And then repeated three times. I remember, ito, ito pa Father Personal, na pasensya na po. I remember in one uh, one study that I attended, no? It was said that uh, culture down ng mga Hujo, uh, pag numbers to them is very, very important. So when they repeat the number three times, parang it, 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 it emphasizes perfection or it, it meant perfection. So that's why, nung naghanap kami nito, ang nakita namin nung kaparadal niya sa New Testament ay Revelations chapter 4 verse 8. No? So yung holy, 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 Nung kinakantahan ng mga angels and saints, si God seated on the throne, or the Trinity seated on the throne. So, it, it brought into mind yung, yung how we worship God. And, uh, yun nga, yung holy, holy, holy na kinakanta rin natin sa Misa. It is, uh, it is uh, an adoration, a, a worship to the Lord that we are really worshiping Him in perfection. In perfection, hindi in perfection. Yung po. So, yung po, yung aming insight. Thank you po. Thank you. We can also speak about the structure of the Gospels, no? You know already that the first thing that Gospel is the Gospel of Mark. He has a particular structure. Bakit kaya ganun ang structure niya? So, that is a question we ask. Even in Matthew, Matthew has uh, another structure different from Luke. In, uh, in Matthew, we have the Sermon on the Mount where we have the different um, uh, values of the kingdom. Kay Luke naman, distributed ito doon sa tinatawag natin travel narrative. So from chapter 9 to chapter 19, ni Lucas, meron tayong tinatawag na travel narrative and if you notice as he was traveling with his disciples meron siyang mga leksyon na binibigay sa kanya mga disciples so bakit kaya gano'n ang struktura ni Mark, iba yung struktura ni uh, Luke iba yung kay Matthew and yet they are called synoptic gospels because you can see them and compare them with one another bakit kaya si John iba yung kanyang structure 
So, even the Magnificat, ano? the prayer of the Magnificat, you can study the structure and then come up with several questions about uh, the structure and then ask questions and uh, look for answers to those questions. Thank you very much. Next, can you pass? Father, what are you doing? Six. 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 Kinuha namin yung John 8, 1, 11. Ano, ano ito? Uh, the story of the woman caught in adultery. And we get there that Jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger. Uh, bakit kailangan niya? Why did he do, do that? Bakit kailangan pa niyang magsulat? Pwede naman niyang paalisin. Malis kayo. Kung sino sa inyo ang walang kasalanan, mauna kayo magbato. Pero bakit kailangan pa niyang mag-bend down? Isa sa mga na research, na research namin, na number one, number one, 